This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero safely on your iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source, and you always control your own keys and seed. Cake Wallet is tested and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. This week on Monero Talk. Douglas Tooman interviews Peter McCormick, creator and host of the most successful Bitcoin podcast, What Bitcoin Did. Peter opens with declaring his admiration for Monero despite being a Bitcoiner first and foremost. The conversation becomes a bit contentious, as expected, with Doug pushing Peter on what he sees as Bitcoin's flaws. Peter was reluctant to argue the technical features of Bitcoin versus Monero, but he was a great sport, and we hope to have him back on soon with technical experts to get deeper into the weeds of these digital cash protocols. Perhaps the most revealing moment was Peter admitting that Bitcoin may have a fungibility problem after doing some Googling during the show. The takeaway being, if you are new to this space, don't only listen to talking heads in crypto land like Doug or Peter and trying to figure out what cryptos have real value. Rather, do your own research to understand what technical features are vital to a cryptocurrency, understand what risks exist for each, and invest accordingly. Monero Talk starts now. All right, Peter. Thank you so much for coming on, man. Yeah, cool, man. Anytime. So I don't know if you remember, we met we met a uh, a while back in New York City. Do you remember that? Yeah, we, Is that the uh, did, magical yeah, crypto conference? Yeah, we met. I, I was going to say we met there. Did didn't I do like a little short interview or something segment there as well with you guys? Uh, I don't think so. I think we tried to get you, but you you were a very yeah. popular guy at the conference. You still are, probably more popular now. Uh, so. Uh, but but we, we definitely talked. We uh we met we talked a little bit at the conference and I think we then uh spoke at one of the after parties. But I think as as you're probably well aware, I am uh one of the one of the Monero advocates that's uh, out I'm there aware. on the interwebs. And uh you I I I kind of put you know put you in that category a little bit. I often hear you talking about Monero on your show. Um you know you're not the you're not a a staunch advocate, but uh, I think you're you're a healthy skeptic. I think it's fair to say somebody who's you're certainly not a non-believer. I don't think you're putting it in the category of shitcoin. Is that fair to say? Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not putting it in the category of shitcoin uh, up until whenever Monero was the last non-Bitcoin thing I held. Um, uh, but I eventually sold the, my remaining Monero for Bitcoin only because n- not for any reason I don't believe in Monero, but I just feel like Bitcoin is a better savings technology. And, you know, that amount of Monero was better to be held in Bitcoin for me. Uh, there is this kind of like weird pressure if you're a Bitcoin or especially if you've got a podcast, it's like if you're anything but Bitcoin, you just get a lot of shit. So very early on, my podcast was you know, it was really a crypto show than a Bitcoin show. And I talk about all kinds of stuff. And I just got an immense amount of pressure. Uh, uh, you know, stop supporting scammers, stop supporting shit coins, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but when I interviewed Fluffy, I said to him, there's like two kinds of Bitcoin Maximus. There's Bitcoin Maximus and then Bitcoin Maximus, but Monero's okay. Um, so I'm okay with Monero. I don't consider it a shit coin. I certainly can see a use case for it. Uh, I my you know a lot of people know my real entry into Bitcoin was wanting to uh, buy treatment for my mother when she was sick, and I used Bitcoin. Uh, if I was in that position again, I wouldn't use Bitcoin because I wouldn't want to be. I wouldn't want that on the ledger, and I'm not proficient enough with privacy technologies to uh, to avoid that scenario. But if I had to do it again, I would use Monero happily. Um, I'm perfectly aware, like if I buy Monero on an exchange. You know, the KYC shows have that Monero, but I would still happily use Monero. I think the project has, uh, um, I, I trust Fluffy Pony, I like him. I like the origin story. It's actually similar in some ways to Bitcoin. So no, I, I don't have an issue with Bit, uh, with Monero. I think it's fine. Uh, I, I I don't, I think calling it a shit coin is, is actually incorrect. All right. All right. We got, so we got, we got one point on the board there. That's, that's yeah. good. That's good. I'm okay, I'm okay with Monero. So how how do we get you to and obviously you know the you could do whatever you want but 
how how could we possibly get you to be a a more staunch supporter of Monero? And and the reason I ask is because I I think it's important for Monero to ultimately survive. Uh, I think we're seeing a lot of issues with Bitcoin. You know, I mean, we could go into it more, but uh, obvious issue being that it's ultimately built on this transparent ledger uh, where it's it's essentially tr- not private at all. Uh, and with enough resources, any transaction can be tracked and traced. Coins can be blacklisted. Uh, one Bitcoin doesn't always equal one Bitcoin. Uh, and my concern is that, you know, it may be cr- become the great panacea, so to speak, right? So the, uh, the, the, or panopticon, I'm sorry, uh, you know, where, where everything can be tracked and traced and, uh, you know, uh, you know, cent- you know, governments or companies with enough resources could potentially uh, begin to censor people and how they transact on Bitcoin. Um, mining companies and mining pools can be coerced to do, do certain things. And we're starting to see these things actually happen. I'm concerned that you know we, we need to make sure that little brother Monero survives how do we get guys like you and Antonopoulos and some of these other big Bitcoin maximalists to, to get out there and start talking, uh, talking up Monero, not just saying, oh, yeah, Monero is OK, but like, you know, onboarding people to Monero so that when the attacks really do start to come, Monero will survive. Oh, well, there's a lot in that. Um, OK, so. I don't think you do it by concern trolling Bitcoin. I understand why you would do that because you want to look at the uh, uh, you want to look at the USPs with Monero and you want to promote that and therefore you want to compare it to Bitcoin. But let me let me talk about let's let's go through some of your points. So you said one Bitcoin doesn't always equal one Bitcoin. So tell me how that's not how that statement is true. Well, you know, it's it's with the na- the transparent nature of of Bitcoin, right? So we know that chain analysis companies exist. Uh, we know today that certain Bitcoins are being marked as belonging to certain wallets. Um, you know, we, the, the United States government has blacklisted certain wallets, uh, put sanctions on on wallets on uh, that are held by you know what's presumed to be uh, terrorists. Uh, we we know these are things that that are already happening and that will happen to a greater degree. So if you can blacklist a coin, then how could that coin always equal the other coins? Well, I, I've always felt like if there is, um, yeah, if, there, if, if somebody wants to sell their Bitcoin lower than the market rate, I'd be willing to buy it. And then I would hop that Bitcoin and, and sell it. Now, it's a different scenario when you're talking about sanctioned wallets because I don't know the full implications and I don't really want the weight of the US government against me. But I think your specific scenario there is like a very unique specific scenario. But generally speaking, one Bitcoin does equal one Bitcoin. Um, uh, Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying there. I also think privacy is improving with Bitcoin. There's a number of great technologies, uh, CoinJoin, there's the work being done by, I can't remember the guy, uh, Chris Belcher. Um, There is work being done to improve privacy and that is coming. Um, I think there's been a lot of focus on the 21 million and that's where a lot of the narrative is shifting and hedge against inflation. But uh, privacy is improving with Bitcoin, the tools available. I don't think you grow Monero by you know talking about the concerns about bitcoin i think you grow monero by just promoting what monero does itself okay yeah fair enough uh but you're you're not you don't have those concerns with bitcoin i know privacy is is potentially improving um bitcoin but don't you think it should be it should have those characteristics today i mean no. we're, we're talking about money right so yeah, yeah. like you you've kind of agreed that and you know, I'm not. I'm not trying to like you know no, make no, I a debate. I just want, but f- don't you think money needs to be fungible? And you kind of agree that there are that this yeah. is happening. That bitcoins are being marked, and maybe it's not a problem today. 
and maybe the fact that you can mark bitcoins that are owned by a terrorist group is actually a good thing right today but it becomes a problem in the future when those coins are controlled by some minority political group in some country that's run by you know some dictator and those people need to move those funds around to help uh you know protect and and help their cause right that's really kind of like what makes this such a powerful technology um and so if Bitcoin lacks that ability, essentially lacks fungibility and lacks censorship resistance. And we can get into that. Doesn't that become a critical flaw of Bitcoin? And that's why I think it's important to talk about Monero in terms of Bitcoin, because Bitcoin is just not living up to its original promise. <laughs> Depends what you say that the original promise is. Um, so... The way the way I think about it is that I think we're still very early. Technology, the Bitcoin technology is still relatively new. It's only 12 years old. Um, very early days of Bitcoin. Um I'm assuming some people, similar to when I first when I first had Monero, I had to use the command line interface. Um I, there was no wallet for me to use. Yeah. Uh, uh so I used the command line interface and I had to learn something there and I was never very confident uh, in what I was doing, but still, I, I managed to figure it out. Uh, I think, you know, in the very early days, Bitcoin was like that, and the, you know, Bitcoin is improving. Uh, but there is certainly a lot of work being done to improve Bitcoin privacy. I know there are people out there who are able to use their Bitcoin privately. They are able to uh, uh, use the tech tools available. They just may be a step too far for someone like myself because it isn't uh, on-chain privacy. But on-chain privacy also comes with its own potential issues, right? You have the potential of an inflation bug and not knowing it exists. So there are these trade-offs. Um, I wouldn't want Bitcoin to have on-chain privacy because of that risk of inflation, uh, that unknown risk of inflation. Yeah, so you know, I, I I encourage you to do more research on that. Um, you know that that risk exists, uh, but that risk, you know, similarly exists with Bitcoin. Um, we've seen it with Bitcoin. We've seen, uh, you know, Bitcoin have implementation issues in its early days, where you know potentially billions of new Bitcoins were created, and luckily that, that was that, like that, seven, year, eight years ago, and that right, but that but it, it happened, right? And it's a technology, and you know that's an implementation flaw that that can happen to Bitcoin. It could happen to Monero as well. Uh, there's the but assumptions, the, but, the, but, but the slight difference is, is if it happens on Monero, you won't know. Well, there, there's different scenarios, right? So it can happen to Bitcoin, right? We we know it. It's happened. It could happen to Bitcoin again. Uh, it can happen to Monero in a similar way where it's noticed. And it could potentially happen to Monero in a way where there's an implementation bug where it's not as easily noticed, right? Eventually, it probably would be noticed because you would see, you know, there's, you know, a, hundred, a million Monero uh, on, on 10 different exchanges that add up to more Monero than should be existing. So eventually, you, you would discover that flaw. Uh, on Bitcoin, you may discover the flaw sooner. Let's but, get that out. Let's get but, that but, out. Wait, I, I just want to get to one point, though. And the, the point being, this is, you know, this is something we deal with in all technology. I mean, you know, we could all be riding around in uh, Model T Fords because, you know, it's very easy to, to comprehend the concept of a combustion engine. And, you, you know, you, you, you look, you, you, you pop the hood and you could very easily trust that, you know, the pistons are triggering correctly and, you know, you could see it all working. Uh, but stepping into a Tesla that's driving you around where you're not even touching the steer, steering wheel requires a lot more trust in the technology. But ultimately, people are getting into those Teslas, right? And they're getting into those Teslas because they trust the people. They trust the math. They trust the science. They trust the engineering behind that Tesla. And that's what allows technology to advance. The same reason we get into to space shuttles, right? So, uh, you know, Bitcoin is is like the Model T in that you know it's very simple, easy to work with, easy to understand. And you know, Bitcoin in the beginning was very abstract, but a lot of people have kind of wrapped their heads around with it. 
Monero is just the next layer of abstraction. Same basic concepts, blockchain technology, but just a little bit more math involved in, in trusting the fact that you know the coins are all there and that when you make a transaction, they'll go through. So you're trusting the cryptography just like you are in, in Bitcoin and you're trusting the implementation. So you have to trust the people that put it in and you have to look and verify it yourself. So you have to trust that there's enough smart people that are looking at the open source code and have determined that there is not a bug there. So I don't see how that's much different than Bitcoin, only that it's a little bit more complicated, just like a Tesla is more complicated than a Model T, but you're getting so much more in return. You're getting that, 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 you know, that Tesla experience. Now you're zapping money around where it's, where it's completely private and untraceable. There's a few issues I take with that. So, firstly, if your if your goal is to interest people like myself and Andreas, who are very much interested in Bitcoin, to care more about Monero, again, I don't think concern trolling Bitcoin is the way because what you're doing is therefore you're bringing up criticisms now, which I don't think are entirely fair with bitcoin like not delivering upon its original promise because the original promise is debatable you know roger veer thinks the original promise was uh cheap fast transactions and it was essentially electronic cash uh other people think it's digital gold uh, you know people think have a, like a range of things what they think bitcoin is uh there was like this uh uh misbelief that bitcoin was anonymous it's actually uh, pseudo anonymous um that's not going to convince me to promote Monero, what's going to permit, uh, convince me to promote Monero is specific use cases for people. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say on-chain privacy is a an advantage Monero has over Bitcoin. I would say it's a differentiator. Um, it's not an advantage because, like I say, I can run the numbers for Bitcoin and I can know the total supply. I can run that with my full node and see it. With Monero, you know, you yeah, said you, you can do it with Monero. But what? So you can ver so you can have an inflation bug and verify the full number. You there's not not a possibility of having an inflation bug, and you can uh, and uh, because I thought one of the problems with on-chain privacy is that you can have an inflation bug and people won't realize that new Bitcoin's been uh, sorry new Monero has been created. I thought that happened with Zcash. With Monero, you you could you know in the client. You can basically count up all, all the Coinbase transactions and you can know that the amount of Monero that's a, uh, is, that is supposed to exist actually exists. Then what you would have to do is then, you know, trust that that command essentially worked, that the program is actually working, that it's all properly implemented, uh, that the math behind it is correct. How do you do that? Well, you or, you or I can't do that, right? We don't have the, the skill set to do that. Uh, but there's many, many people that do that are much smarter than us that have been looking at this for a very long time, just that they like have been looking at Bitcoin. And they're saying, no, it is implemented correctly. You know, the, the, the math behind it uh, is correct and we can rely on it. So, I mean, y you can. You can verify that the amount of Monero in existence are are actually uh you know a given number based on running the code and and looking at it and then relying on the fact that it's been properly implemented and you have to rely on that in bitcoin as well it has to be properly implemented for it to work and we've seen that there's been instances where it wasn't properly implemented and so i mean it's it's no different between bitcoin in that respect now like we said you know there could be that hidden inflation bug but eventually you would see it. And it's ultimately really not that much different than Bitcoin in that, you know, you can have implementation bugs in either Bitcoin or Monero. So, so I, I mean, that, that's Bitcoin. like... That, I think I, an inflation I think bug on Bitcoin would be known straight away. Uh, potentially, you know, or somebody might know it before somebody else and they can short the entire, you know, Bitcoin market and they can drive it, they can drive it down to, you know, drive it down to zero. Um, you know, there could be some person that, you know, maybe, maybe figures out how to, how to break the discrete logarithm, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, that, that's, it's, it's possible. These are, these are assumptions that we make. 
Uh, these are this is what it's built upon, but this you know they're not essentially laws of nature here. Um, but I, mean, I guess what, 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 what I, the we point can't... I want to make here, though, just before you respond, is is that you know I know I know you're saying, and I don't want this to come. You know, maybe I re incorrectly phrased things in the beginning. You know, my my goal isn't to uh, to to tell you that you got to go out there and promote Monero. And I, I, obviously, I realize that's not the best way to get people to promote Monero. They need to see a real use. But I do think it's important to talk about. Bitcoin's flaws here. And I just don't hear that being talked about enough. And then when it is talked about, I don't hear people then comparing it to Monero where those flaws have been solved. Rather, they go to, oh, but you know, you can't, uh, if there is a secret implementation bug, uh, you know, Monero is worthless. Uh, without talking yeah, about yeah, I didn't say that, though. fungibility I didn't say that. is critical. You know, go gold is fungible. Uh, the U.S. dollar is fungible. Uh, Bitcoin is not. Monero is. And I in disagree. Bitcoin, the discussion I think, just... I think Bitcoin is fungible. Well, we, we agree that, it, you know, we talked about it and agree that it can be blacklisted and that, you know, it, it it's not... Fun I mean, that makes it not fungible. Right. That no, that no, that that means that there there is a law out there where you face consequences of transacting with a certain wallet. It doesn't mean Bitcoin itself is unfungible. It means you can basically write a message and attach attach a note, attach a message to a to to a Bitcoin, and that's a problem. Well, no, it means that the the USG can can create a, a sanctions against certain you know, against certain addresses, but it doesn't make the Bitcoin itself not fungible. Well, it does because it it's the protocol itself isn't resistant to the ability to mark units of it. So, what, what, I assume you would rather that be the case, right? Where you couldn't mark units of the protocol. Uh, I don't think the government can mark it. I think they can create records that tell people that certain coins are are sanctioned. But they can't stop somebody sending the person who owns that wallet. They still can't stop them sending that Bitcoin elsewhere, even when they control the the mining farms. I mean, I mean that's 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 another issue we could get into. Is but they, but they don't control the mining farms. But they they can right. So we're starting to see that we see that we saw that recently in Iran, right? So they're concerned about the mining that's taking place there. They're very easily finding where all the Bitcoin miners are. Uh, it's very easy to find, you know, uh, a uh, you know, somebody who has a warehouse full of Bitcoin miners, it's very easy to approach them as the government. It's very easy to, to take over Bitcoin uh, mining farm. Uh, it tends toward it. Te it's tending towards centralization. We're seeing that. We're no, seeing. No, I disagree. I disagree. I don't think it's tended. To, I, th I think it's tended towards decentralization. I mean, so I'll give you two examples. Uh, so there is a. Uh, so a lot of people talk about Chinese centralization of mining. Um, uh, you know, there's a somebody signed a message within. Uh, where is it? Let me find this. This is an interesting thing. Somebody signed a message within a Bitcoin block. I'm trying to find the record now. Criticizing China. Where is it? I saw it on Twitter earlier. Uh, now I'm just going to be the one, and that's had 536 confirmations. So that's. That's been confirmed by wallets, uh, sorry, miners that exist in uh, China. Um, and that was critical of the Chinese state. Uh, I actually think uh, Bitcoin's becoming more decentralized in terms of mining. Uh, Barry Silbert's, let me try and find this. Sorry, I mean, I'm not like people know my show, I'm not the most technical. So when you want to talk about technical things, someone like Andreas would be a much better conversation than i am um, well yeah i mean we we know that there's a lot of mining happening in china right here there's... we go here we go uh, digital currencies group mining arm enters top 10 global mining pools i actually think bitcoin mining is becoming more decentralized we've seen some growth in russia we've you said what's happening in iran you say what's happening in china uh, you know we do we do know there's a lot in china there's a lot of growth in the u.s i've just seen a, a, a mining unit which was in the jungle i think bitcoin have you, have you mining... seen the compliant mining pool that's being started uh in in canada 
Yeah, and I don't think it will survive particularly long. I think pe- I don't think people will. I I just don't see a, a long life for a compliant mining pool. If if governments make regulations that says you basically have to use a compliant mining pool, you don't think that would survive? Or it makes regulations that that miners have to have to make sure that they're not processing transactions from certain blacklisted wallets. Those miners are going to essentially have to be forced to use a compliant mining pool to make sure that they're not taking that risk and accidentally processing a transaction from a blacklisted wallet. So, I mean, these these are the problems that are happening because of Bitcoin's flaw and they wouldn't exist. They don't exist. I mean, we Monero exists. We know Monero exists. We know it's different than Bitcoin. We know it is fungible and Monero simply doesn't have these problems. Well, Monero's got other problems. Monero's got a problem that exchanges are delisting it. Right. Why are they delisting yeah. them? Because Monero works, right? Yeah, exactly. So you've got, you've got a different regulatory problem than Bitcoin has. So you can say, well, Monero's failing because it can't be compliant with certain regulations that allow it to exist. I think both have a regulatory challenges, but... I don't. I I think your concern over concern troll in Bitcoin, and you're making these issues out to be bigger than they are. I don't see we have a massive issue with centralization of mining. I think mining is becoming more decentralized. I also think some of the work, uh, I I think it's called Better Hash, the work that uh, Matt Corello is doing, which is supporting that. You know, the thing about Bitcoin is like on every vector, people are always working on directionally improving, directionally. Uh, making sure Bitcoin is more decentralized on it and every uh, on every kind of uh, measure. I feel like mining is becoming more decentralized. I, I feel like a compliant mining pool will have a, a very limited uh, life. I haven't talked. I don't want to talk to someone like Jimmy Song, but I want. I would want to find out how uh, how that how what can be done about a compliant mining pool? Can it be rejected by the network? Because I, I'm not keen on compliant mining pools, and I. Yeah, but I don't have an answer for that. You're asking me about stuff I have no experience in. Well, I mean, yeah, but we know we know it's happening, and I'm sure maybe you'll even uh, potentially do a show on something like that. Uh, it yeah. seems to be indicative of a problem. Um, you know, the these chain analysis companies seem to be indicative of a problem, and uh, you're, I mean, you seem to be taking the stance that well, that's not a problem uh, that. Bitcoin can essentially be tracked and traced. No, 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 no. that's not what. I, no, that's not what I've said. Uh, well, you're what? you're saying that it can't. I, I don't. Yes, yeah, so I'm not really clear. You're saying that that that's not a problem because it's governments that are doing it and it's these companies that are doing it to Bitcoin. So as, it depend, it, as it, long as they eventually issue. stop doing that, then we'll be okay. It would depends on each issue. Um, I I I think your concern troll in Bitcoin, which is a project, which is an ongoing project, which is. Uh, continually being de- developed on best practices, which direction is becoming more decentralized. I think each cryptocurrency has a problem. Uh, XRP has a problem that is considered a security. Ethereum has a scaling issue. Uh, Monero has a regulatory issue in that because of uh, uh, exchange are going to delist in it. Yeah, Bitcoin has its own issues, but but each one has its own uh, like uh, 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 um, yeah, benefits over each other too. But I think your concern trolling for the sake of uh, uh, promoting Monero, but if anything, you're turning me off Monero by doing this because you put me on the defense on the subjects that I'm not an expert in. Look, we've got to remember, I'm the guy who asks questions, not usually answers it. If I was yeah. good at answering, I would, I, you know, I, I wouldn't need to do the podcast. I do the podcast. So I'm better at the questions. Uh, and, and I actually think, I even think right now, like doing a show with me going into this level of detail, I think this is not even helpful for your listeners. Because there's going to be two types of listener. There's going to be the type of listener who's perhaps a big fan of Monero like yourself who sees issue with Bitcoin. They're going to go, oh, let's see, that fucking idiot he doesn't even understand. And that's going to like entrench their position. And then you're going to have maybe some listeners who aren't, uh, who aren't as experienced as, or aren't as entrenched. And they might listen to me and they might hear a misleading response because I'm not an expert in this. Uh, so I think interviewing me based on this level of detail doesn't actually help anyone. I think when you want yeah. to talk about, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's a great level of detail. We're, we're talking about you know superficial things here. The fact that we're not really, we're actually, we're talking, we're talking about like some of the most important issues. You know, you're I think people that are listening to it that are, are Bitcoiners that you know listen to you, 
may start to question Bitcoin, which is a great, great thing. And I think that's what you should be doing more of. And I, so I think that's definitely a positive. No, I do. Somebody's do, I do listening do to this and they're saying, wait, one Bitcoin doesn't equal one Bitcoin? That sounds like a problem. And if they, if they have that thought, that's an amazing, great eureka moment for them. And they'll go do some Googling and then they could decide whether or not they think that's true. Uh, and I think anybody with you know, good reasoning skills will, will realize that that is in fact the case. So I, I don't think in providing information is a bad thing. I think that's a good thing. So the market can properly decide. I mean, ultimately, it's going to happen anyway. Um, but I think it's good to, to help be part of that mechanism that gets that information out there, which is, yeah, which is what you do, which is why you run a, a podcast yourself. It sounds to me like you it sounds to me like you believe Monero is an alternative to Bitcoin, like it, it's a better technology and people should be adopting it instead of Bitcoin because of its properties. Whereas I would say they are complementary technologies that do slightly different things that can complement each other. But I think trying to have them trying to face them off against each other uh, uh, with a guest who isn't the right person to answer these kind of questions. I don't think that is productive. I think it's productive to have the conversation. Um, you know, I, I think Monero and Bitcoin are two things. If anything, I think Monero's the the ultimate hedge to Bitcoin and Bitcoin's the ultimate hedge to Monero. Do you hold Bitcoin? Uh, I, I used to be uh, solely a Bitcoiner and I've moved completely into Monero. You've com- moved, com- yeah, see that, I think one yeah. of the issues with doing that is that you end up having like, you end up having a bias. Uh, I mean, that's that's. Well, yeah, we all, we all have a bias. You're obviously extremely biased about Bitcoin. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know, I agree. I admit that, but like yeah. that, depending on when you did that, that might have been a costly decision. So, the way I read this interview is like you you want to promote Monero because for you as a store of value, that's a that, that could be a profitable exercise because if more people adopt Monero, that's good for your. Monero holding, which means yeah, I, th- I think that's that's a very obvious thing, Peter. That's that's what everybody's doing. It's it's, it's people are fighting for the adoption of these different currencies. Uh, yeah, uh, it's not, not I think in the Monero it. community in particular, that really doesn't happen much at all. Uh, but you know, during during this talk today, in in order to make these points, I ha- I have to say these things, and I think it's important to say and to just you know, put that in a lot of, all right, well, you know, it's kind of start going down the road of, all right, well, you're a shit coiner. And like, you know, that's, that's like the ultimate argument that a Bitcoin maximalist makes. Well, I and don't just, make that one. It just it's ends the conversation right there rather than talking about the merits. And when we get into talking about the merits, you start to talk about things like fungibility and, you know, but you're saying that's too high level, but I think that's, you know, that's a pretty simple and basic thing. Uh, you know, what what do you think what do you think the purpose of cryptocurrency is or, or what do you think its its greatest potential use case is how is why why don't we just continue to use gold why even use bitcoin at all what is the purpose of bitcoin well i think it depends on the in, individual but so i just want to repeat finish my point cuz i didn't finish earlier it's like yeah you know, obviously i hold bitcoin and i want people to adopt bitcoin and that's good for my personal holdings as well and you're the same with monero but i feel like you're now finding ways to attack bitcoin to try and get people to adopt monero and i just don't think that's going to be a successful strategy for you i think you've yeah i'm not you know i'm pointing out the flaws of bitcoin just like bitcoiners point out the flaws of fiat currency right true but I think in doing that, this isn't making me want to promote Monero more. Um, I think if you talked about it more as a complementary technology and talked about what the two of them did, because you're not going to dethrone Bitcoin. I mean, you can try. Good luck. Um, And if I thought that this was this conversation, I would have said to you, you know what, let's write down the topics. Let's do it another day because I could go and do my research and at least come armed with the right arguments or the right defenses or the right, you know, the answers. Um, I'm a, I'm a, somebody who asks questions, not tends to answer them. Um, but you're not going to dethrone Bitcoin. That, like that ship sailed now. Yeah, but it does. It doesn't have to. It doesn't have to be an all or nothing. It doesn't have to be a dethroning of of Bitcoin. 
Agreed. It feels like that's what you're trying to. It feels like that's what you're trying to do, though. Like I think you've convinced yourself, like that Bitcoin is a flawed technology, and that's why people should adopt Monero. But I think that's the wrong approach because I think they're both. Both technologies have flaws. Like I'm just reading about fungibility, and you know, what? actually, you're right. There is a fungibility issue with Bitcoin, but it's not all Bitcoins. But I, I agree with you. There's a fungibility issue with Bitcoin now because I've you know I've read some of the details on this. But I just think it's going to be, I don't think it's going to be a successful strategy for promoting Monero. I think actually what you're going to do is you're going to turn people off Monero by attacking Bitcoin. I think if you talk about it as a, as a different I technology, think, it doesn't seem to be I think we should just talk about the merits. What, what people decide to do is what, you know, maybe them well, just hearing. we're going to do. Well, that's what we're doing. So we, we, we're trying to talk about the fungibility, but instead you're, you want to talk about uh, how I'm using this podcast as a method to you know uh persuade people to do certain things uh we're just we're having a, a conversation no, about you admitted technology. that that's what you said you, you you admitted that you actually said that you said of course yes peter and you, you admitted it as well and my, my whole point is that's what everybody in cryptocurrency is doing right everybody's no, doing no, that no, well not entirely not entirely but my point being is like i don't I'm advocating for I'm advocating for a project that I believe in. I think Monero will preserve liberty in the digital age. That's why I'm extremely passionate about it. And I think Bitcoin is critically flawed. Now, you don't have to agree with that. But I mean, that's not I don't see why that's a problem that I have that opinion. I don't care if that, you know, I'm not here to ultimately if that's not convincing people, well, I ultimately I don't think you're welcome. I, I, I'm, I'm, ma I'm making the right, you know, uh, following my heart at, at the moment and, you know, my intuition and uh, where my research has led me. And, you know, I hear you and you're saying, you know, you just did a quick Google and you're realizing Bitcoin may not be as fungible as you thought. I mean, that's like literally the most important thing to, to understand with all this. I mean, well, it's no, no, it's not. It's, essential. It, it, it's only essential if that gives you the unique selling point of Monero. But the fungibility issue that you talk about that that didn't stop people in Belarus being uh, to receive donations to uh, to uh, uh, support their protests against Lukashenko. That didn't stop people in Nigeria receiving. It, donations. But it will. It may one day. It may catch up with them. That that information saved on that ledger forever. Yeah, it may catch up with them at some point. But at the same time, like I say, there's a lot of work being done into improving uh, uh, privacy with Bitcoin. And you know, Bitcoin. I trust Bitcoin developers. I think they're the best developers in the world. They have an option to do on-chain privacy the same way that Monero does, and they've made the decision not to. They've made the decision that uh, off-chain privacy is better. And there's a lot of work being done on that. I know there are people who are able to operate privately with Bitcoin and. They, they know better than me. Uh, uh, and, and if I went to one of them and said, look, I need to get my privacy shit together, I'm sure they, they, they could help me. I just don't think, like I say, if it, uh, the way this is going, I, th I, think, I think it's a flawed strategy for you to attack Bitcoin as a flawed technology is with critical uh, flaws. I just don't think it does. For some people, some people don't want fungibility. I know this sounds mad. Some people happy to custody their Bitcoin with other people Play on the twenty-one million and hedge inflation. Whether you think that's right or wrong is irrelevant. Some what do you what do you think wrong. about that? I think that is a use case, and I think the thing about Bitcoin is that it has use cases. Uh, that is some of the use case for some people. Okay, yeah. uh, other people it is censorship resistant money. Other people it is uh, to be able to store their wealth and move across borders. There are a number of different uses that people have, um, and that exists. I would probably to, to debate the idea of fungibility. I just want to spend a little bit of time and go go and look at that um, and, and and have a better argument for you. But like I say, there are people out there who do a better job at defending stuff like this than me. Yeah, and you know, but I, I think it's well, it's productive if now you're going to go look at look at Bitcoin's fungibility. So it's productive in that right there. I, while you're looking at that, I think you should look at the decentralized nature of Bitcoin as well. I mean, are you familiar? You're, I'm sure you're familiar with ASIC mining, right? Yes. And the fact that, you know, ASICs mine, mine Bitcoin. It wasn't always ASICs. It used to be, you know, essentially uh, nerds in their basement running their computers. Uh, in Monero, technology has been built to be ASIC resistant. Uh, there's been great advances made there, very 
breakthroughs in technology. Howard Chu invented Random X, and basically it only allows CPUs to be the most competitive in mining, uh, essentially preventing the you know the establishment of of specialized ASICs that can mine better than CPUs. And what does that do? That helps maintain the decentralized nature of the mining network so that you don't have these tremendous warehouses of ASICs that only certain people even have access to that could essentially be co-opted by the states that they're housed in, by the governments that they're housed in, which is and you know, I encourage you to look into that deeper. That's potentially a major issue. Uh, you know, it could turn into the censorship of transactions when you know these Bitcoin mining facilities start to get co-opted by governments. And like we said, we're already seeing it with uh, you know these mining pools that are coming out that are saying that they're going to only mine uh, clean Bitcoin. So I encourage you to look into that. Are, are you? Do you have any opinion there on the decentralized? A nature of Bitcoin versus something like Monero. Um, sorry, by the way, I found that uh, that the transaction. If China controls Bitcoin or Bitcoin mining, then why would this transaction have five hundred forty three confirmations, which in it says Taiwan is an independent nation? Um, I, I don't think we have a centralization issue with mining. Okay, people often talk about it. People concern troll with it. I don't believe we have. An issue with the centralization of mining. Um, I, I believe it's becoming more decentralized. In terms of the different technologies, no, I don't know that Monero, because I haven't looked at Monero, so okay. I don't know about this. So I can't really answer on that. But again, there, there are people that could be, there are other people you should be interviewing before you interview me on stuff like this, because you, like I'm known for not being a technical person. I know. Okay. That. Well, we, we've, we've, to me. we've talked to many, many people uh, in the Bitcoin community and the Monero community. I want to talk to you because, you, you know, you you are, uh, you know, you're, you're an influencer and it, that's important. And, you well, know, better, you know like I said, you can do whatever you want. And, you know, you've admitted that, you know, uh, you're influenced by the bags you hold and you're influenced by essentially, you know, the, the people that you're around. Right. If you start talking about Monero or X, Y or X, Y, Z coin instead of Bitcoin, uh, you're probably going to lose a lot of Bitcoin maximalists. You may even no, use no, no, no. I'm fine. I'm fine on Monero. I've always been fine on Monero, and happy okay. to talk about it. But I it just this. I I didn't realize this was going to be the topic. So I, this is the kind of thing where I probably, if I'd have known, I would say just send me over to what are the things we're going to talk about because I need to do the research on this because we're talking about things. I just I don't. I spend all day every day looking at Bitcoin, right? But I don't look at it from the technical side. I look at it from the side to help, help people understand how to invest and how to understand what's happening like in the macroeconomic market. Um, we're talking about like deeply technical issues and they're just it's not something that crosses my path. Okay. Well, I would love whatever I could do to help you understand Monero better, would love to would love to help do that in any way possible. Uh, I know you had Fluffy Pony on. Maybe you could have somebody, you know, and not me, because at the end of the day, you know, I'm I'm kind of I'm like the you of Monero, so to speak, right? Maybe you could have uh, somebody from the Monero community, community, one of the developers. Uh, you know, Fluffy, he's not even the lead maintainer anymore. I don't even know if you're aware of that. I mean, a lot. Yeah, of people, yeah, I am aware. I'm aware. Yeah. So <laughs> you know, there's there's a lot of other very uh, you know active people in the Monero community that are are making great strides. Maybe you could have one of them on to talk. Maybe you could have Howard Chu on. He would be amazing. The guy that invented Random X. Uh, he would be a great guy to talk to. Um, it's a Bitcoin show. It's a Bitcoin. Well, that's uh, so. Why though? Why isn't it? Why isn't it a digital cash show? Why isn't it? Uh, you know, why isn't it about digital cash? Why is it about just Bitcoin? Why is match of the day about football and not about all sports? Well, because it comes down to what what is Bitcoin trying to achieve? Bitcoin is just the name, right? It's 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 trying, and it's just uh, an implementation of something trying to uh, achieve a certain outcome. So why not talk about the other things that are potentially doing that better? What? Mm, okay, we're getting into that area again. I, do you know what I think that we're better off doing? I think you, if you want to do this, you're better off. T telling me the subjects you want to talk about, giving me some time to go and research them, so I can give an educated answer and go and speak okay. to people. Okay. Do you want to ask have... me some questions right now about Monero? No, I think I think we should do this again, and I think you should get me on 
and you should have me alongside somebody else who is a little bit more technical we can go through the points and th that'll be the person who can then go because i don't i'm just not a technical person i'm a creative person so this I, this kind of interview i don't think serves anyone any benefit because i shouldn't be trusted on anything technical therefore my opinion on the technical things shouldn't be trusted therefore i don't think anyone should trust this interview as a as a as a as a place for making a decision between Bitcoin and Monero, because there are people who, who understand this stuff at a deep technical level. That's their job day in, day out. I don't. So right. I, just, I don't, yeah. I, I like, if anyone's listening to this now, do not fucking trust me. I'm a moron. I don't get this shit. <laughs> Same here. You know, you do your own research, obviously. Uh, but I, I think this is productive. You know, I think, I think it's a good start. And if you're, if you're willing to, I would love to send you information. Uh, to to go research and you don't I, even have I to would, research. Yeah. No, I would definitely come back. Send me your key arguments. Let me go away and do my research because then at least I can come on. But like I say, I don't spend day in day out comparing the technical side of cryptocurrencies. There are people who do that because they're technical, or they're developers, or they understand that shit. I don't. What I do is I try and like I did a UTXO show today, and that was about people getting the basic understanding of what a UTXO is because the majority of people. Like I get a lot of shit for like talking about the technical side of things being beyond people, but I read the DMs I get, I read the emails. Most people just don't fucking get the shit, or they don't have the time, and so I it's all baby steps for them. Um, that's what I do. I help people with the baby steps because that's what I need. So if you want this kind of like deep, I'm not even the guy. To, I'm the I, I can sit on the conversation and go, oh, well, what about this or what about that? But I'm not the one to defend or promote. Monero's mining versus Bitcoin's mining, or discuss like fungibility. There are people who are experts in that, and they're better off doing. Well, that. yeah, but you're talking to all these experts all the time, and I and I totally get yeah. that. You know, but uh, but you are an influencer, and that's why I want to make sure you're you're getting access to the information. Because like you know, I see you know like Alex Gladstein. Um, yeah. uh, I think he's been on your show a few times. Uh, he might even be teamed up with you, right, for Defiance, right? Um, you know, so I always hear him talking about Bitcoin and uh, talking about how it can be used to, you know, it's, it's a great censorship resistant technology, but it, but it's not. And that, that's a problem to be out there as somebody who's, um, you know, an influencer uh, in, in these areas, telling people whose life potentially depends on the technology they use, that they should be using Bitcoin when it may be very costly to them and it may lead to the exact opposite of what they're trying to achieve when they're using a transparent ledger and all their transactions are traceable and that's that's right. a big issue because we're out there and we're telling people use bitcoin you know if you're if you're worried about sanctions in your country use bitcoin all right well what what happens when they catch up to you and then you know they they do chain analysis and they find you and they track you that's a big problem and i think you know, we need to be responsible. We need to make sure we're telling people to use the right technology. Just like, you know, everybody's moving over to Signal now, right? They've, they've, they're concerned about WhatsApp. I can I see think there being that big talk about, moment. Yeah. If you want to be responsible, I think the, next, the, the important thing to do is we pause this now. You send me what your key arguments are, and I'll come back. But I'll bring somebody with me who, who can answer some of the questions that I can't answer. But what I think I can add to the conversation is the kind of questions that I just have, which which I think will be useful. But I think that would be a much more productive uh, conversation to people to listen to than me trying to defend technical things. I just don't have the experience or skill set to do. Okay, understandable. Especially, especially when you think Bitcoin is so critically flawed, I think it's irresponsible for this to go out with me trying to defend something at that kind of technical level because I can't do it. So I think that would be much more productive. Okay. Yeah, we could redo it. I mean, I'll probably post. You don't mind if I post this show, right? Or you know, this you, you discussion. Can, you can post it if you want. I don't think it's productive, but I'm not going to tell you not to publish it. I just don't. I don't understand what anyone's going to get out of this. Okay. Lol, I, I think it, I think lol, it's important. Peter Cormack's a fucking moron. Doesn't understand the technical side, and I get trolled. Listen, I I, 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 th I think you know. I think. Monero's greatest flaw is that, you know, I don't have, uh, you know, a sexy British action. I mean, you're doing it. You do a great job, man. You do a great yeah. job. Uh, I understand that you're not a technical guy. I'm not extremely technical either. You know, I'm not uh, some cryptographer. Uh, you know, I'm not a computer science guy. I'm an engineer. 
I'm an attorney as well by trade. Uh, I can get into the weeds with things. I was good at physics in high school, but that's about go. that's about it. You know, I'm not. What's that? I'm a, I'm a creative guy and I'm a marketing guy. You know, I know it, and it's and it's done very well. Out. And you know, you've done you've done amazing things for Bitcoin and crypto, and I applaud you for that. And you know, you're a big part of helping crypto grow. I mean, it's it, that can. That can't be taken away from you in any way, but it's it's why I want to talk to you and why I want to try to get you more into it Monero because yeah. I, it, it, it is a passion of mine and I'm so concerned. I know a lot of Monero people are too, and a lot of hardcore old school Bitcoiners are too, that they're seeing, they're watching Bitcoin be co-opted. They're watching the, the, the critical flaw, as I like to call it, being exposed and being misused. And we're just not hearing the alarms go off and we're not hearing people talk about these other alternatives. Yeah, well, like it, this wasn't the conversation I expected. So like I say, if you want to publish it, do. I would just okay. add a disclaimer. Anyone listen, don't fucking listen to my opinion. I'm a moron. <laughs> listen to my show and listen to the experts. But well, I, I would happily do it again, but I would want to bring someone with me. I would want to know the topics in advance. A bit like, you know, when Joe Rogan had uh, Jack Dorsey on, to mm. talk about uh and they were talking about censorship yes um, he brought tim, tim paul on with him as well because tim paul is the expert on all those subjects mm -hmm. uh, that's what i do i i know how to facilitate a conversation and moderate a conversation but i can't sit there and you know week in week out uh, uh, uh know all the technical answers the macroeconomic like there's too much to know uh, i know how to facilitate a conversation yeah. so you can publish it all you want i think it's i think i've added nothing to the debate but I, I think you I, did. I, I think you'd be surprised. I, I think there was some, there was some, there was some insight there. And uh, when I listened to your show um, with, I guess you. it was Shinobi, right? That was, no, I listen to your show all the time, but I listened to your recent one. I think it was your last one. And like, so even listening to that, you know, for anybody, cause I know you cater really to, to kind of noobs too. Right. So yeah. like, uh, obviously you cater to, to hardcore Bitcoiners. Cause it's like, you're, you know, you're out, it's like watching a football game, right? Like you're, you're like the guy who's uh, um talking about what's going on in, in crypto world and everybody's tuning in. Um, but for the noobs, I mean, listening to that, I mean, that's, that's scary, right? The fact that if you want to do privacy right, you basically have to be like uh, Shinobi and, you know, know how to use the Bitcoin client, break down your, your, you know, your UXTOs, make sure you're properly combining them, uh, make sure, you know, there's so many steps there to properly use Bitcoin if you want it to come close to being as fungible as it can be or as private as it can be. And that that's, you know, that's a scary thing to, to well, I think, hope I, that. I, mean, I, 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 don't, I don't think it's scary. Think it's scary but I, I well, it's, it, you, I see that as, as a flaw, you know, in Bitcoin, you could tell people, you know, if you want to tell somebody, if somebody's about to make some transaction that may be controversial, uh, you could tell them, you know, use Bitcoin, but watch out. You've got a coin joiner first. And obviously, you know, that might be illegal, actually, because you're opting into a, a mixing service. Uh, or you could do X, Y, or Z. Or you could tell them, just use Monero. Well, just I think... Monero. And it's as simple as that. You know, it's, it's, I know when you first used it, you had the client, but now it's all on the phone. We have Cake Wallet. We have these others. You, you send Monero just as easily. You can just send Bitcoin. And there's no other thought involved. It's... It works as digital cash. Nobody knows what you're send, how much you're sending. They don't know who sent it, and they don't know who received it. Well, that's going well, to come with other issues, liquidity, liquidity and blah, blah, blah. I think the most productive thing now is send me a list of key talking points. We reschedule and do it again, and I'll bring somebody on to like help me on the technical side that I don't understand. I think that would be the most productive thing. Okay. We could do that. I would love that. I think I think we'll get a lot more out of it, and I think the listener would get far more out of it. All right. Well, I appreciate your time anyway. I, I hope I hope I didn't scare you off now, and you will come back on. No, when we it's get just not the interview I expected. If I thought it was, I would have been like, okay, I, I need to prepare. I need to know the key topics. I didn't think we would be talking about stuff like this, but that's fine. Let's do it again, but let's do it in a productive way so we make sure because all that matters is the listener gets the right information. Can I can I get you to do one other thing between now and then? Can you add? Can you add to your uh, your website a Monero donation address in addition to a Bitcoin one? No, uh, no, because I'm a Bitcoin show. 
aren't you considered like i went i went on your website i saw the address i looked it up i see there's like four bitcoins in there you're not concerned that people can see the the amount of money they're they're donating to you and you know the fact no, that it, there's definitely not four bitcoin in that dress anymore you mean historically there's come to it yeah then you could track and trace it you know there's there's a trail there you could see the amount that went in there i mean that that's a little concerning you know with the you know, with monero that's not the put a monero donation address up there I had a Monero address on there for two years and didn't receive one Monero donation. Okay, well maybe now, maybe now you would. You know, we'll yeah. we'll get it out to the Monero community. Maybe I think I think the point really is I need uh, one of those. I need to sort out the privacy of my Bitcoin donation address because it's been that fixed address for a long time. Um, I wish I was still full Bitcoin in that address. <laughs> um, Let me ask you one last question before we go. And I, if if you could, I mean, this is kind of a stupid question, but if you could magically turn your Bitcoin into, uh, you know, a Monero version of it, so or Bitcoin staying as Bitcoin, if you could snap your fingers and it can be as private and, as and fungible as Monero, would you want that? Would you rather have, you know, fifty Bitcoin or fifty untraceable private Bitcoin? <laughs> I think that's a leading question because you, you'll give me a question where there's obviously only one answer, but we're not considering the externalities or what it makes the, the like what it requires for that to happen. And it's like it's like a theoretical situation that doesn't exist. So I'm not going to answer it because it's a leading question, but I understand why you're asking it. Okay. Because um, it does exist. It it's called Monero, where you know. Yeah. But I, I get, I get, I get all your arguments. Send me the, send me the discussion points. Like I said, I'll bring somebody okay. with me. And like I said, all that matters is if, if we're gonna have a discussion, the most important thing is what the listener takes from it, and we, we should have a duty to give them the most accurate information. When we get into deep technical subjects, I'm not gonna give them that, so that this isn't serving them any benefit. So send me the questions. I'll come back and we'll do it again. But I'll bring somebody with me who is better on the technical side. All right, man. I appreciate it. All right, Thank dude. You. Peace All out, right. man. Ciao. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you have an Alexa device, you can tell it to listen to the latest episode of the Monero Talk podcast. Go to monerotalk.live slash subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.